Since I first played the original red and blue versions of Pokemon, my favorite part about these games has been the settings. The towns, the cities, the different locations in each region, going to explore new regions and learning more about the culture and background of each region. Since the very beginning, that's been my favorite, one of my favorite parts of this franchise. So I was extremely excited when it was revealed that the new games that are coming out, Pokemon Black and White, the new region, Unova, where the games are set, is based on the New York City metropolitan area. And I happen to have been born and raised in New York. I don't live there anymore, but it's still part of my life. So it's extremely exciting and special to me personally that these new games are taking place in a world based on New York and that my, my hometown, my home city, and a city that's important to a lot of Americans is finally going to have a place you know, sort of near to home that's been transported into the Pokemon world. So what I hope to do is to anchor Pokemon's Unova region a bit more firmly to the real New York City of our world and sort of help create that connection that personally is what makes role-playing games and fantasy in general an exciting and worthwhile thing for me personally, knowing that this there is something real behind this, that there is something tangible and relevant that can be experienced and appreciated in our own real world. And a lot of people are probably thinking, how could New York City, a concrete and glass jungle, possibly serve as an appropriate setting for a Pokemon game? Well, a lot, those, a lot of people who aren't familiar with New York are really surprised when they realize how many different unique locations and how many animals there are in New York. There are deer in New York. In my old neighborhood, there were rabbits, as well as turtles. There are all kinds of different birds. Some of them are really rare. Till about a century ago, you could still find rattlesnakes in parts of the Bronx. And as far as locations go, there are forests with streams and lakes in New York City. There are subway stations that look like gardens. There are subway stations where you could, where you could see the Atlantic Ocean. There's some really rural, really out of the way looking places in New York City proper that a lot of people wouldn't even believe are in New York City and have their own subway stops. Just to clarify, none of what I've showed you is Central Park. Central Park doesn't even count. Central Park is a planned, deliberately engineered park. Everything I just showed you is actual real forest and real community that is within New York City limits. Of course, Game Freak made a lot of New York a lot more naturalistic and a lot more uh, primeval than New York, which they made it a lot less built up than New York City, which of course, you know, it's not New York City, it's Unova, it's its own thing, it's just based on New York. But at the same time, I've seen a lot of people think that the presence of uh, rural areas and of uh, forests and of you know, streams and um, wildlife was something fictional that Game Freak adapted into Unova. There's actually, there's a basis for those things existing in the New York City area. It's just that Game Freak placed more emphasis on those parts of New York in Unova. As far as the anime is concerned, it seems like they've scaled up Unova compared to New York City. For example, in the first few episodes, Ash travels from Nuvema Town to Accumula Town, and the real life equivalents to those neighborhoods would be maybe at the most no more than like an maybe an hour or two's walk by foot, whereas in the show it took it took them a couple of days to travel that same distance. So it seems like they scaled up Unova a lot in the anime, which makes sense because they have to fill up you know a year or two worth of material, and they can't just have them waltz through the whole area in just a week. You know, it's not once again it's not literally New York City; it's Unova. But on the same token, there are also elements of real-life authenticity to New York in the anime's depiction of Unova that are absent from the games. For instance, in the first episode of Pokemon Black and White, Ash arrives in Unova at a seaplane base that's just north of Nuvema Town. That seaplane base, that's maybe a 10-minute drive north from Nuvema Town, that actually exists in real life about 10 minutes north of Coney Island, where Nuvema Town would be in Brooklyn and it's called Floyd Bennett Field, and it's actually, it's been aban nearly abandoned for several decades now. It's mostly parklands now, but there's definitely a real life uh, 
basis for Ash arriving by seaplane at that location in Unova in relation to Novemba Town, if you want to take that and compare that to the geography and the history of New York City. In the next scene, Professor Juniper drives Ash south down a parkway from the seaplane base to her laboratory in Novemba Town. And in real life, the parkway going from the site of the old airport to Coney Island is actually extremely similar. And judging by the screenshots from the anime compared to the, some actual photos, it leads me to think that they may have actually used reference photos from the real location, right down to the landmass across the water in both the photograph and the screen cap of that that uh, right turn heading south into the city, it's into the town itself. That actually, that's actually geographically correct, and I'm really impressed that uh, either by coincidence or intentionally that they got that much correct. So that we already know that Unova is generally based on the New York City area, but which areas in New York City do the towns in Unova correspond to? Well, with this really crude map, I'm going to show you. So, as we already established, Nuvema Town would be the Coney Island, Brighton Beach down in the south of Brooklyn. Accumula Town would roughly correspond with, with the Flatbush area. Stratton City would represent Bedford-Stuyvesant. Nacreen City would be Brooklyn Heights. Castelia City is Lower Manhattan. Nambasa City represents the Theater District in Times Square. Driftfield City is in Hoboken, New Jersey. Nassaltran City is Secaucus, New Jersey. Asiris City is Union City, New Jersey. Opelucid City is in Harlem, back on in the Manhattan Island area. Pokemon League would be Historia in Queens. Wakanosa Town would be Maspeth, Queens. Andela Town would be Can either Canarsie or Howard Beach, depending on how you wanted to interpret the map. And Black City would be Long Island City. So as you can see, a number of towns and communities in and around New York City were included. You know, Brooklyn, Queens, and Manhattan, parts of New Jersey. Uh, Staten Island got cut out, the Bronx got cut out. But there's one part of Queens that I'm very, very personally disappointed that they cut out. And that would be the bay, the greater area of Undella Bay, and the peninsula that you could actually, that they, ac they accidentally sort of animated into the background of that shot when they're heading into Nuvemba Town in the anime. That's the Rockaway Peninsula. And the really tantalizing part is that you could actually access a small part of this bay in the games in the form of the Andela Bay Sunken Ruins, and it's geologically correct. So in terms of its placement in relation to the rest of Brooklyn and Queens. So it's not like they Game Freak didn't know it existed. They just didn't and they just chose not to include it in the game. And as honored and excited as I am that New York City has been uh, made part of the Pokemon universe in Pokemon Black and White, I have to say that I'm personally disappointed that the Rockaway Peninsula specifically wasn't included as part of Unova. Because not only did I grow up there when I was a child, but the area in between Andela Und Bay and the peninsula, the area circled here in real life is a 9,000 acre wildlife sanctuary. How could Game Freak possibly go about, do the research about New York City and to make a Pokemon game based on New York City and miss the fact that there's a 9,000 acre wildlife sanctuary in the city? Not only is it a, a 9,000 acre wildlife sanctuary that that's in New York City, but it's the only wildlife sanctuary in the U.S. National Park System. And it's in New York. It's pre was virtually in the shadow of the World Trade Center when I was growing up. And the subway goes directly through the sanctuary and through the bay. And it, the subway goes up and down the peninsula too. So it's definitely part of New York. So it's extremely disappointing that they mi missed out on this opportunity for something that could have lended itself very, very well to a Pokemon game based on New York City. But, oh well. 
So, mainly for the sake of my own amusement, and also for the purpose of help, hopefully helping make the Unova region a bit more real, a bit more tangible, a bit more reachable, so to speak, for, uh, for people, I went ahead and added the, the Greater Andela Bay area and the Rockaway Peninsula to the map of Unova. As you can see, I really didn't have to physically alter Game Freak's map much, just shift it over slightly so I could add in the Peninsula and Bay area. And it's interesting, the way Game Freak tr altered the proportions of New York's map to facilitate the game world they wanted to create, it would actually place more emphasis on the Bay and Peninsula area than you'd find on a normal map of New York City. And that gives me a small amount of hope that perhaps Game Freak does have plans for this part of New York City, that maybe they'll add it in as sort of a Battle Frontier type area in a theoretical third version of the games that, you know, they probably wouldn't announce for a year or two if they ever make it at all. So my trip through East Unova, as I imagine it, is going to start at Indela Town, where you would take a bridge east towards C Cross Bay Town in the Wildlife Sanctuary. Highlighted here are the Undela Bay sunken ruins that are actually programmed into the game, and I'm just highlighting this to show you how absurdly close the locations that I'm adding in my own sort of fictional fanon are would have been to being included in the actual map of Pokemon Black and White. Heading on to Cross Bay Island, we have the Pokemon Wildlife Refuge, which in real life is absolutely stunning, and lots of bird watchers go there. And even though this is a Pokemon game, I guess the idea of a refuge would be that you wouldn't be catching the creatures. So I thought in the game it would maybe be a good spot for a Pokemon Snap style mini game where you'd be in a cart or in a first person view somewhere or another and taking pictures of the Pokemon for points, sort of like the the Swamp mini photo taking mini game in Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Continuing east past the Pokemon Wildlife Reserve, we have Cross Bay Town, its real life counterpart the town of Broad Channel is probably one of the most unlikely places that the New York City subway could take you. Uh, a lot of these sh pictures were actually taken from the subway itself, and I know this having, uh, used to, having used to ride the subway through here almost every single day. Lots of towns on stilts, lots of sort of almost uh, swampy looking areas, very interesting town. Possibly, it could be seen as lots uh, similar to Pacifidog Town in Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but yeah, it's a, kind of similar to that town in the way that everything's sort of built on the water on stilts. Now here's an aerial photo of Jamaica Bay, just to give you an idea of the real-life geography as compared to how it's depicted in the game. Uh, circled in yellow would be where Undela Town would be, and the sunken ruins would be basically in the water within that circle. The red would be Cross Bay Town, or in real life Broad Channel, and bracketed in green in the foreground is part of the area of what in the Pokemon world I'm calling Arverna City. And Arverna City just happens to be the grandest and most important of all the cities in East Unova. Slight bias there, wink wink. I imagined that the Pokemon Gym would be also the library, and that because there's lots of information being traded there, as well as the actual Arvern neighborhood is pretty uh, culturally diverse, that perhaps the gym there would specialize in in the training and raising and research of out-of-region Pokemon. Let me tell you a quick little story about uh, the real Arverna city where I used to live. Uh, back when I was a little, little tiny kid, and we would walk from the old house where I used to live and haven't lived for years and years, don't bother talking to me. Anyway, when we used to live there, we'd walk to the subway station, and on the way there, there were literally woods with wild rabbits living in them that would regularly like hop out and show themselves and really weren't even that afraid of us. So think about that. Woods with wild rabbits hopping out on the way to a New York City subway station. It's a pretty unique neighborhood. Now all that, all those woods are probably developed now and the rabbits are all extinct, but of course in uh, Arverna City in the Pokemon world where everything's perfect, those woods are still there, and there's still wild rabbit Pokemon there, because imagination is awesome, and you can do anything with it. 
Next area on the map is Arverna Boardwalk, which is just outside of Arverna City. It's a nice long beach boardwalk overlooking the ocean. And on, alongside the boardwalk are a series of courts for all sorts of different games. Tennis, um, I guess squash, there are walls for playing paddle ball, there would be Pokemon battle arenas, you know, small ones, uh, Pokemon Bakker fields, and you know, you could just go, go up there and spend your day there and have a good time. You know, there, and the real life courts that, I, that this is based on, you know, they're free, you know, you just walk up and play as long as someone's not there already, bring your own equipment. And along the boardwalk there are lots of vendors and people selling hot dogs and stuff, and I guess they'd be selling potions and whatnot. Uh, in the Pokemon world as well for people doing battles. North of Arverna City in Secret Town, you'll find a lot of street fairs and bazaars and flea markets where there'll be lots of people selling handmade items and imported novelty stuff. You know, different items, different f food things that you can feed your Pokemon. Or South of Secret Town in the Bay is the Pokemon Ecology Center of Vandela Bay, and that is a place where scientists and environmentalists find ways to recycle and break down old rubbish into energy and new products with the help of different Pokemon, which I think would probably be a really interesting way to thing to see how they'd go about doing that. And there's no real life equivalent to this ecology center. The actual location in this exact spot is a very ugly oil loading dock. So it would be nice if there was an ecology center there instead that worked on making the world cleaner instead of dirtier. Heading south down the road from Arverna City is an abandoned amusement park. Now years ago the amusement park when it was running was one of the biggest tourist attractions in Unova, but Mimbasa City pretty much put them out of business, so now the parkway is abandoned. There really once was an amusement park in the peninsula in New York City here, and it was closed actually before I was born, but I did get a chance to explore the remains before they finally tore them down. Similar to the power plant in Pokemon Red and Blue, it would just be an interesting place to explore and mess around in, see if you could find any cool items or anything like that. The next area I added to East Unova is Tepig Island, and there are no, well, Tepigs on the island. It's actually named after its real-life counterpart, Hog Island, which no longer exists because it was completely destroyed in a hurricane. It actually, the island itself actually sank. And in the Pokemon world, I, I imagine that maybe they, a storm caused by Zekrom sunk the island, and very recently they rebuilt the island, and as Hog Island once had a bunch of resorts, a, a small resort on it, now Tepig Island has a small non-gambling game corner, you know, like a, a real, like, you know, game center where you buy tokens and then you get tickets for only for winning the games, which you then trade for prizes. That way, the Fuddy Dud censors can't say it's gambling and, and censor it out of the games, like they did for the slot machines and the card table games and the more recent versions of Pokemon that have been coming out in the US and Europe. Heading further south past the abandoned amusement park, we can see the bridge that links Seclusa Town in East Unova with Accumula Town in Central Unova that's actually featured in the games. And looking under the bridge, especially towards the left, you're looking directly at the real Nufema town. At the very end of the peninsula, past Seclusa town, is Battery Beach, which is named for the batteries of the old naval installation that's now become a sort of beachy park area, where you could, I'm sure there'd be trainers standing around that you could battle with and there might be some interesting ruins of the naval installation to explore. And the last and least town in southern Unova is Seclusa Town, so named because it is a secluded private community full of people who really don't even want you there. So my best advice is to head straight through that town and right over the Azure Bridge to Accumula Town and back to the official canon in-game Unova region. And might I add that this bridge feeds directly into the parkway that goes from the now abandoned uh, airport where Ash arrived in Unova down to Novema Town where 
Ash, Ash, and the player's journey in Unova begins. So, some of you might be wondering, H, why would you go through the trouble of creating all this when it's not in the game and it's not official and you can't even actually play it? Well, the reason is simple, because it's... I can honestly say that I had as much, if not more fun, imagining and creating all of this than I would have had, or as I would have had, if this area was actually included in Pokemon Black and White. You know, it's really fun to imagine a place that's familiar to you, or is part of your personal history, or part of your memories, in a fantasy setting. And so, with my own hometown, like, literally, within eye shot of being included in the Pokemon universe, I could not sit back and, uh, not take advantage of that and have fun with it, even if it wasn't included in the game. So I hope this video enhances your ability to enjoy the Unova region, knowing its real-life connections and parallels in our world. There'll be links to all the different real-life neighborhoods that I mentioned, so you could learn more about them. And there'll also be credits for all the photos of other people that I used that weren't in the public domain. So thank you very much for watching and listening, and have fun exploring Unova and Pokemon Black and White. Heading north from Arverna City is Secret Town. Whoa, oh, I burped there. Ugh. Oh, that was a pretty big burp.